Hi, everybody. Welcome to Citizen Survival Plan, and welcome back if you've been here before. Today, I have a very basic radio video for you, and I see a lot of comments where I can tell people don't quite understand the concept and the difference between a GMRS and a ham radio. And in today's video, I'm going to try and explain the difference between them. A GMRS radio simply has to do with the programming inside of the radio. It's simply a channelized service. The channels are already pre-programmed in and it will not let you break the rules. It will not transmit outside of GMRS frequencies. A ham radio, think of this as more of a blank slate. It operates on different bands and different frequencies and it's not channelized. It can kind of go anywhere you want it if you know how to program it and know how to operate the radio. I'm a ham radio operator and I'm a licensed GMRS radio operator, if you will. A lot of those licenses are, if you watch my channel, are kind of nonsense. But if it means anything to you, I'm both and I'm going to try and explain it today. Okay, to start this video, I don't want to make things too complicated. But in order to understand the difference between these radios, and I bring this chart up all the time, this is a radio band chart. And in today's video, we're talking about handhelds only. We're not talking about mobile or HF equipment or anything else. So your ham radio, Baofeng radio, like your typical UV5R, shown right here, is going to operate on these bands. It is going to operate on the UHF section of the band chart here, and that is the 70 centimeter. GMRS also operates here, but way at the end at 462 and a 467. So it operates a little bit outside of the 70 centimeter where the ham radio operates. So also your ham radio Baofeng radio also is going to operate up here on the VHF section of this chart and it's going to operate on those frequencies on the two meter band. So a ham radio is going to operate on different bands and use different wavelengths. These two different bands here have to do with the length of the wavelength of the transmitted radio signal. So two meter, it, it's simple. It is a two meter wavelength from tip to tip. 70 centimeter, same thing. It, it's 70 centimeters from tip to tip on that wavelength. And that is sort of the difference with these radios. The ham is just going to be able to have a little bit more flexibility with making its wavelength longer or shorter. And a GMRS radio, shown here, this is a GMRS, and we're going to get into the different types and what they look like here in a minute. But let, let me just explain this. This radio is stuck and pre-programmed with safeties and bumpers, if you will, only to operate on that tiny little section of the UHF band, and it's going to be on 462 to 467. It's 467 uh, frequency there is going to be up where its repeater access is. That's where it transmits up to access repeaters. You're mostly going to be on 462 for all your simplex radio to radio you know if you have a radio and your buddy has a radio you're going to talk on 462. It, it's channelized though and we're going to get into that in one sec. One other note I want to add before we move on in this video is some fancier ham radios probably not a UV5R but Baofeng and Woshin and some other brands will make a tri-band uh, radio that's a ham radio and it will actually operate on the 1.25 meter band it will operate on the 2 and the 70 centimeter and, and also with ham radio i want to mention this too you can turn it up that frequency up on there and go the whole way up into gmrs your ham radio is not fixed to where the chart shows you your ham radio can go outside of that chart which can get you into trouble if you don't know what you're doing and you start going outside of that band plan and you're off GMRS and you're off where those frequencies are on that chart, you can end up on business frequencies and emergency services, which can get you in trouble. So be aware. All right, let's move on and talk about the actual radio. Okay, so we have two of these radios here. I got a ham radio, this Baofeng UV5R. 
And you'll see when I turn it on, on the ham radio, all you get is frequencies. It's not channelized. And this is the way this radio is going to come. You're going to open it up out of the box. It's not going to have any channels in it. It is going to be a blank slate for you to program. And it's not difficult. You can put GMRS in here and MERS and everything else, and you can operate on the ham bands. So this radio kind of does it all, and you can put whatever you want into it and operate. We're going to talk about the laws a little bit later in this video about that and my thoughts on that. But in the meantime, let's look at the GMRS radio. This is a GMRS radio, and when you purchase one of these, Make sure if you're buying it off Amazon or anywhere else that it says GMRS in the description. A ham radio is going to either say it's a ham radio or an amateur radio. It's probably going to say one of those two things. GMRS, this is what it is like when you get it out of the box. I erase these, and this is how they come. So you're going to turn it on. It's going to tell you what it is. And you can see I got channels in there. And this is the big benefit to buying a GMRS radio. If you want to operate just on GMRS, these are great. Let me shut that off. Because of the channelized mode in there. I didn't have to plug this into Chirp and upload the GMRS frequencies and name them and add power levels and everything. It just comes ready out of the box. So if you don't want to... Be a radio person and learn all about radios and everything. This is a great option to just buying a nice, capable radio. One other thing I want to show is this is basically the same radio as this. This is a GMRS and this is a ham. I have this plugged into Chirp and it's got everything in it. So I got MERS in there and I have the GMRS channels. And I labeled them just like a GMRS radio would have them labeled in there but I had to upload everything in there myself. I had to take the frequencies, put them into Chirp, list them, name them, and upload them into this radio. So that is a big difference. So that is the difference between them, basically. You get more flexibility, more bands, more operating procedure, if you will, with a ham and with a GMRS. It's simply channelized and ready to go. One note I want to make about any radio, whether it be a GMRS, a MERS, or a ham radio, they all look the same. There typically will be a version of a ham, MERS, and GMRS radio all encased in the same shell. So a lot of times when you look at them, you, you can't actually tell the difference. It all has to do with the programming and what frequencies they operate on the inside of the radio, with ham radio giving you the most flexibility and most bands and frequencies that they operate on. Okay, so this is something I want to explain also in this video. It's kind of important that GMRS and FRS operate on the same channels, at least channel 1 to 22. We're going to get to the repeaters down here in one second, but just as an explanation, they all operate on the same frequencies and or channels. And if you look over here, the FRS power limits are this, the 2 watts from channel 15 to 22, and it's like a half a watt here in the middle, and that's two watts in the beginning. So this just means when you buy one of those junky FRS radios from Walmart or Home Depot or whatever, this is all the power you're going to get. When you buy a GMRS radio, it will let you do five watts on the first six or seven channels here, and then it's down to a half a watt, and it'll automatically do this so you don't break the law. If you have a ham radio and you have a 10 watt radio, you can operate all on all these FRS or GMRS radio frequencies that are that are pretty much license free. If you are operating this a GMRS radio on these FRS frequencies, at least 1 to 22, it's basically a license free system. And if you want to push a little extra power, I know it's not technically legal, but no one is really going to care if you take a ham radio and type these frequencies here that are GMRS slash FRS 
and push a little extra power on them. So that is sort of the confusion with GMRS and FRS. They, they're the same, but technically the power limits have to be different, but almost nobody follows this rule except for the people who actually make radios. Down here, when you see 15 to 22, these are repeater channels. So if you look, it'll operate 467. What's happening with your radio, at least the GMRS radio, it is pre-programmed to, when you hit your push to talk button, it is pre-programmed to jump the frequency up to 467 from 462. And what it does is it transmits on a different frequency and it listens, it receives, on regular GMRS channels. So GMRS and FRS are very tied together except for the repeater channels. And that is where your license is going to come in. You need a GMRS license to get on a GMRS repeater. It is the only time people will actually ask you for your call tag. They're not going to ask for it when you're transmitting 1 to 22. I mean, if you're just on a simplex channel and you're just transmitting, it would be insane if somebody were to ask you for your call tag. But you jump on a GMRS repeater, they're going to ask for your call tag. They're going to want to transmit, especially if you join a net or something, they're going to want to hear your call tag. Okay, let's get into a little bit of the legality and the issues with using a ham radio to operate GMRS or MERS or anything else. There is rules from the FCC that you're not supposed to do this. A GMRS radio is approved by the FCC to operate on GMRS frequencies and you're only supposed to use a GMRS radio to operate on GMRS or FRS frequencies. The problem with that is you can't use the other license-free system on there, which is MERS, a VHF band frequency, if you will. You can use MERS, and it operates a little bit differently than the UHF that's GMRS. They're both license-free. You're just not supposed to use MERS or anything else on another radio. So GMRS won't let you. If you type it into a ham radio, you can use MERS on a ham radio. This is where I'm going to tell you I do not care at all about that rule. Some people say it's a law. I don't think it's a law. It's, it's a rule. And it would be equivalent to driving through the center of the desert, I don't know, in Arizona or something, all by yourself and going one mile an hour over the speed limit. Nobody's going to care. You're probably not going to get pulled over. And it just doesn't matter in my opinion. Type MERS and GMRS frequencies into a ham radio and use it. I think it's perfectly fine. But just for your information, it is technically not allowed or illegal, if you will. Now, the problem with that is ham radio operators might not admit this, but they do this anyways. Because a ham radio, like a UHF, VHF ham radio, um, can do MERS and GMRS, hams will type, and I do, I'm a ham radio operator and I do this. I do not have two radios to operate on 70 centimeter and 2 meter and then have a separate FCC approved radio to operate GMRS. I simply take my ham radio, I upload all the repeaters and stuff into a ham radio along with my GMRS and GMRS repeaters, and I just use one radio to do it all because it can and it really doesn't matter. Someone in the comments might tell you that the FCC is going to come arrest you. I highly doubt that, and I think that that is a ridiculous comment to make. But if you need to consult a lawyer before you take a ham radio and transmit GMRS on it or MERS, feel free to do so. So to recap, basically all I'm saying is a GMRS radio only transmits GMRS. It's fixed like that and it can never change. A ham radio is more flexible and lets you do more things. I want to break into a couple of misconceptions about a ham radio versus a GMRS radio. If you have a ham radio like this, and you have a GMRS radio like this, and this only operates on 70 centimeter, 
This can extend or shorten its wavelength depending on what frequency you're on. It's a little bit more flexible. And the frequencies work a little bit different. And in some situations, VHF might work a little bit better. And in some situations, UHF might work a little bit better. But generally speaking, if you take a ham radio and a GMRS, they're going to go the same distance. They're not going to be any different. They will transmit about five or six miles. There is very few situations where if you change over to VHF or UHF or 2 meter versus the 70 centimeter band, that you're going to like all of a sudden go way further. You are limited to five or six miles simplex on a handheld no matter what band you're on. Some people might argue with me about that, where there's some weird situation where they went way further or something. These are the exception to the rule, not necessarily the rule. Generally speaking, they're the same. And uh, one thing that I feel like hams never tell you, and I don't want to veer off too much about this, but ham radio operators always make comments that, oh, you could, you could transmit all over the world with ham radio. Well, that is true, but with HF equipment. Setting up an HF radio is much different than using this little bow thing. HF can run the whole way up to 2,200 meters. So a really long wavelength to bounce your signal all over the globe. And you can use skywave propagation, basically bouncing your signal off the sky, and that's what gets you all over the world. You will not do that with a UV-5R. That is way up in HF. You need special equipment, special antennas, and a lot of knowledge and training and just research to be able to do something like that. That is also, in my opinion, more of a hobby. As a ham, I'm going to tell you, it's more of a hobby than anything. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you understand the difference between a GMRS radio and a little bit about the bands and how this stuff works. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I answer as many questions as possible. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.